Hey friends and welcome back. Today we're going to be going into the kitchen and pressure canning some chicken stock. I'm going to give you step-by-step -step instructions so you can can your own chicken stock. So come on y'all, let's head on over to the kitchen. let's just get started I'm going to show you a little bit about the pressure canner before I actually get my food in there my jars filled and put in there I'm using the Presto 23 quart pressure canner it's a pretty common pressure canner I cook on a flat top surface so I cannot use an all-american sure wish I could but they're just way too heavy you want to make sure if you have a flat top that you check with your manufacturer to see if you can pressure can on it this is a newer one and most of the newer ones will tell you that you can but it's there's a weight limit um, the inside of your pressure canner lid there's going to be a piece of rubber that is a seal a sealing ring every time you go to use it you need to oil it I just put a little olive oil on my fingers and put around it you can use it with a dip paper towel in it or whatever this is going to be your pressure gauge and you're going to make sure before you ever begin to pressure can that you look up your altitude and in the book that comes with your pressure canner you can find out what pressure that you're supposed to can with your particular pressure canner for that altitude for here we are supposed to can at 11 pounds of pressure 11 psi pressure this little button that you see right here is your little um vent lock and as you begin to build pressure in your pressure canner once we start you'll see that vent lock go up and it will stay up while you're pressure canning this will go inside of your pressure canner it's called a canning or a cooking rack and you will put this in the bottom of your canner now you can buy a second one of these which will allow you to actually stack pint jars in your canner so that you can get more uh, jars canned at one time but i've already filled my canner let me lay my lid aside I've already filled my canner with three quarts of water. That's what this particular canner calls for, is three quarts. I'm going to place my canning rack inside. Your jars will sit on that rack as you can. So you wanna make sure that you have that in there and have the, uh, the amount of water that your own pressure canner calls for you to have because each press pressure canner is different. So what we're going to do is I have my stock over here that I made yesterday and I'm turning it on so we can heat it up. And while I'm heating that stock up, I'm gonna go ahead and turn my pressure canner on. I'm gonna turn it on medium just so the water in the pressure canner can heat up. We're going to be working with hot stock. That means we want our jars to be warm. That also means we want the, press, uh, the water in your pressure canner to also be about the same temperature as everything else. If you put cold your stock into cold jars you're going to find broken jars um, you've got to keep everything the same temperature if I'm canning something cold we'll put that into cold jars and your pressure canner water will also remain cold uh, today I'm using quart jars to can my stock in this is I just usually use the small mouth quart jars when it's something like stock because it's liquid and easy to get out now I have a wide mouth here to show you the difference if you do not know here's your little um, regular mouth jar it's called and this is your wide mouth the wide mouth jars are much easier if you're canning meats or if you're canning pickles or something like that I like to save my wide mouths for those types of things that I can you're going to need your vinegar because remember we always have to wipe the rims out of our jars got my ladle I have my jar lifter and then you have this that will go on top of your canner if you can see what it is that is your pressure regulator that will keep your canner from going over 15 pounds of pressure you do not want to go above the pressure that is required for whatever you're canning and you do not want to go below and as I say that you don't want to go below this is probably the most important thing you can remember when you're canning if your canner pressure gauge goes below the required amount of pressure while you're counting an item even if there's only two or three minutes left and your canning time would be up you have got to start all over again you've got to reset your timer and make sure it reaches that exact amount of pressure 
for that exact amount of time. So that is something very, very important. Otherwise, you're not going to kill anything that's inside of there of bacteria and your product will not be safely canned. So if it goes below 11 pounds of pressure while I'm canning, I have to stop and reset the timer. Even if it was 30 seconds, I would stop and reset that timer. It's that important. Now also, you've got to remember that to keep an eye on your canner while it's while you're canning. Now I know mine does not have the little jiggler that you can hear it go ch -ch 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 like that while it's canning. So it's important for me to always keep an eye on that gauge while I'm canning because uh, you would really be surprised how quick that pressure gauge can go up. You don't want it going way up and staying up. Your jars could crack or you just don't want that happening. And you definitely don't want it going over 15 pounds of pressure. So I've got to try my best to keep it right at the 11. Now it's hard when you're working on a, a, one of these flat top stoves and not only flat top, but electric stoves are harder to keep that pounds of pressure regulated. So you've just got to keep an eye on it. And after you've canned a few times, you'll find that sweet spot of where you can get that pretty close and keep an eye on it real close. Now the next thing I want to tell you is I keep the book that came with my pressure cooker handy in a drawer right here where I do all my pressure cook canning and I would suggest you keep yours handy too because um, you can look in here and it will give you the um, pounds of pressure that you're supposed to can at for your pressure cooker as well as we're canning the chicken stock today and it's going to tell me that for quarts I need to can this for 25 minutes and um, that's very important that you know exactly how long you're supposed to can. So let's go ahead and get started, friends. I'm gonna to try to lower the camera down so you can see right at exactly what I'm doing step by step. All right, friends, I'm going to take my very first jar out of the canner and start filling it. Wanna put your funnel in. Now I have strained, the fat in this uh, stock has, solid, has solidified overnight in the refrigerator and I strained as much as I could off of it. So we don't want to can all that fat in your stock. If you have too much fat in your stock or in your broth when you're canning, then there's a chance that your uh, seal will not be sealed and we don't want that to happen for sure. Now I may only get three quarts out of this. I wanted to can this small batch just so you guys could see what it's like. I think um, this will be a good choice for you to start with. I don't know anybody that doesn't need chicken stock in their <laughs> kitchen. And um, it's just a great thing to always have on hand. And oh, it's mercy it's gotten so expensive. Now this calls for an inch of head space. So if you'll remember the last time I taught you about the head space, and I already know that right to that first line is an inch, so I just take it there. I don't, I've done this enough that I don't, don't really have to measure it anymore. I'm going to get another jar out. And remember that I said to always, always wipe your rims off, especially when you're dealing with something fatty like this. You want to wipe those rims off good because you want a real good seal on your rims. And I go a little low on the side too when you're canning something like this. Going in for my jar lid. I knocked one out. And I have my ring that we're putting on. And remember, I told you last video, finger tight on your rings. It's the same way when you're pressure, pressure canning as it is when you're doing a water bath canner. That all remains the same. And we've got our first jar of stock that I'm placing into the canner. Now we're going to fill another jar. And these jars are not piping hot, but they're hot enough that the stock or that going into the pressure canner either one is not going to cause them to crack and break when you get them in there just a very important step and 
remember that we want to go for one inch of head space on this. Your head space is very important. And in case you realize that I'm not debubbling, this is not anything that you have to debubble because there's nothing solid in it. Now, if there were solids in this, uh, chicken chunks or anything like that, we would have to debubble. That's a very important step. But since this is just a liquid, we don't have to do that. I can go just a hair more to get my one inch head space. That bottom rim right here, I don't know if you can tell or not because I can't flip this jar sideways right now, but that's one inch of head space. And after you've canned for a little while, you'll be able to know that inch. Now, if it's something that's not an inch, I'll usually go ahead and measure it, but I know that that's an inch and I'm going to go right ahead and put it in the canner. And don't forget to wipe those jar rims off. Got my lid, got my ring going on finger tight and now we're going to put it right on into the canner I love having good stock on hand uh, bean uh, bean stock <laughs> uh, beef stock um, beef bone broth my goodness have y'all pr priced any bone broth lately it is outrageous. But if you start canning, you don't have to worry about that because you can make your own. In fact, if you're somebody that lives, uh, ever buys a half or even a quarter of a beef, um, you can have your butcher tell them you want those bones and bring them home and put them in your roaster and roast them. And then uh, put them, when you roast them, after you put them into your big roaster pan um, to start making your broth, throw you a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar in that that will help to get the collagen out of those bones and that's one reason we like bone broth it's good for us besides that it's just tasty and anything that you use it for but try to go for no waste if you go and you buy yourself a rotisserie chicken and you tear that meat off of those bones don't throw the carcass away immediately freeze it uh, and get it out later and make you some stock out of it because this stock is something great to have on hand whether you're making um, gravies or whether you're um, cooking your rice in it oh my goodness we could use chicken stock or any kind of beef stock just about every day of your life in your kitchen when you're canning or when you're making meals and if you have things like this i think handy you may just find yourself a little more apt to cook from scratch more it does make a difference in your kitchen. These jar lids always want to run away from me, people. Now then, got that one on. I may have a little more than four quarts here, and that's fine. If I have any left, whoa, about did that too tight. If I have any left over, I'll just keep it in the refrigerator in a jar. And that way I can have it to make something for dinner in the next couple of days. Actually, my brother called me a while ago, right when I was setting up to film. And he requested that I make him some chicken and dumplings and him come to town to see me. My dumplings are nowhere near as good as my mama's. I sure hate to disappoint him. But I will probably try to make them. I've made them before and everybody says, oh, they're good. But you know when your mama made something that was so good... It's hard to ever match hers, and I think she had that extra love that went into her chicken and dumplings, and that mattered. Oh, I wish I had her back. Oh, I wouldn't want her to come to this whole world again, though. She is definitely having better time singing with the angels than she would be down here. But she made the best chicken and dumplings and baked. That woman could bake. Oh, my goodness. You wouldn't believe the things that she would bake. Everything from scratch. My family, my grandmother, we always laugh about once in a while we'll open a box cake and one of us will always say grandma just turned over in her grave because that was just something unheard of in our family you do not bake anything out of a box it was just <laughs> very frowned upon now i have just a little bit too much in this one so i'm going to take it out a gravy spoon might have been better to take that out with but this is okay we just want to get it down y'all to that one inch mark it's your head space is so important so very important so 
So make sure that you never go above that head space or don't want to just put a partial jaw in there either. All right, let me wipe that rim with vinegar, and this is four quarts. And I've probably got about a half a quart left in that pot, but I'm not going to can it. I'm just going to go ahead and um, I'll put it in a jar here in a minute and stick it in the fridge, and then I'll just use it up in the next day or two for something good, something good and yummy. Boy, we sure can find a way to use this good stock, that's for sure. All right, guys, here's the last jar going into the canner. I don't like using wide mouth jars up. I told you that on, on things like stock because um, jars are hard to come by these days. If you find a bargain on them, you better buy them because yeah, they're hard to come by. All right, now, uh, I have vinegar, which I wiped my jar rims off with, as you know, I'm going to put that vinegar right into the water of my pressure canner. And the reason I do that is because we have very hard water here. And if you put vinegar in that water, it'll keep your jars from getting real nasty. All right, I'm getting my lid to my canner and I hope that you can see, I'm gonna to try to move this camera over a little better. Sorry for all the shaking. I'm going to put my canner on, and there's a certain way that it has to go for it to lock. And as many times as I've used this canner, y'all, I still struggle with it. Okay, my canner lid is locked on, and we're ready to go. I'm turning my heat to, it's about medium high right now. I don't want to move this around much because it will scratch up that, the, uh, glass top stove trust me while this is uh we're waiting on this to come up let me tell you what happens next we wait for the heat to rise up and this little valve right here i think you can see I'm probably shaking y'all to pieces this little valve right here steam is going to start coming out of it when that steam starts coming out a steady stream for 10 minutes then we're going to put on this guy it's going to sit right on there, but we're not going to put it on until the steam has escaped for 10 minutes. This is another important thing that you've got to remember when you're canning. I'm going to go ahead and clean up this mess right here and get my clean towels ready for when I take my jars out of the canner. And after the steam has stopped and I'm ready to put this on, I'll be back with you guys. All right, guys, we've got a steady stream of steam now you probably can't see it but if I hold something up there over it you'll be able to see the condensation so you know that steam is coming out and we're going to set that timer now for 10 minutes to let that steam for 10 minutes and then we'll be putting this on but it has to steam this is very important it has to steam let that steam escape for exactly 10 minutes be right back all right, we are at 11 pounds of pressure, and our pressure lock is up. Now it's time for me to set this timer for 25 minutes because that's how long that it takes. And remember, I cannot allow this gauge to get below 11 pounds of pressure at any time. If that were to happen, I've got to start the whole process over and set the timer again for another 25 minutes because it's important that whatever you're canning stays at that pressure for the amount of time that it's supposed to pressure can. So for 25 minutes, I've got to make sure that is at 11 pounds of pressure. I'll be back with you when it's time to take these jars out. Guys. Okay, friends, the timer's about to go off, meaning that the 25 minutes that we're supposed to can our stock is up. However, we cannot take the lid off immediately. We have to wait until the pressure has gone all the way to zero and this little button has dropped down. So it's, I tell you guys a lot that something's important, but when I tell you something's important, it's important. I'm turning my stove off right now. 
Um, there's just a lot of important things to remember when you're pressure canning, and most of it is for safety, not just for your own safety, like if I took the lid off this pressure canner right now, but also for the safety of your food. So I know that I repeat myself saying, now this is important, now this is important, but there is a whole lot of important things to remember when you're canning. And if you follow all of these safety rules, um, after a while it's just, you do it without even thinking about it. So like everything else in life, habits form by doing them um you're never going to learn to can if you don't get that pressure out canner out and start trying so i will be with you every step of the way guys if you need any help you're more than free to comment um i'm going to leave my email address down below this time so that you can send me an email if you need help i will be free to help you all i can but the first thing you have to do is take that step get over the fear and just take the step decide what you want to can first this chicken stock is a good choice um if you want to do that oh by all means just take that first step. okay the pressure pressure gauge is on zero and the button has dropped down which tells me that i can actually safely take out the jars from the canner before i open this up and all this steam starts releasing bentley wanted to say hi to you guys hi <laughs> he's doing his own thing today pressure cannon is not his cup of tea so we're going to go ahead and take the lid off. I'm going to put you guys down, put the camera down, put you guys down. Put your camera down so that you can watch me take the jars out. And I hope I don't jiggle y'all around too much. All right, off goes the lid. And always make sure that the lid, when you take it off, the back of it will let the steam out. Don't open it up where it comes toward your face. There's still enough steam in there that you will burn yourself. Ah, uh, this is some beautiful stock, you guys. First jar coming out. Look at that. You cannot buy that at the grocery store. You sure can't. Another beautiful jar. Love having this stuff on my shelves, on my pantry shelves. I keep quite a bit of stock. And like I said, I know you guys buy rotisserie chickens. Don't throw those carcasses away. Leave a little meat on there. Save the skin. Whatever you do, just get busy canning. Now, these rings will stay on just like when you're um, trying to lower y'all even some more. Just like when you're water bath canning, the rings will stay on. For 24 hours, in 24 hours, you're going to check your lids, make sure everything's sealed, and then you can wipe your lids down, wash them down good, and put everything away. And don't leave your jar lids on when you put them away. The rings come off when you store anything. I think I told you that in my last video, just in case you're watching this one and didn't watch the last one. The rings will come off when you put them in the storage to store them. Um... Thanks for being with me today, guys. I had a good time, and I hope you did too. And no telling what we're going to can next. So hang around. We're going to have some more fun. I'll see you next week. Bye, friends. Be blessed. <laughs>